Well, folks, you just heard a track off the brand new Crocus Live album. The album being, of course, Long Stick Goes Boom, live from the House of Rust. And joining me on the phone now is Chris Von Ruhr, of course, bass player, producer and founder of Crocus. Welcome to Firebrand Rock Radio. Hey, it's my pleasure to be with you, Ray. Great. It's a real pleasure uh, on my part to get you on the show. Uh, been a fan of the band for, well, should we say, we probably shouldn't talk about time because, uh, let's say, Crocus has been around an awful long time and it's great to see that you guys are still going strong. No, Crocus is now almost 40 years old. We had the great 80s, then was a little bit drying out the whole band, a real wrong direction. We had split up, we had bad management, bad food, we had disco, we had many, many things. And since five years, the original formation is back again. And since then, uh, the long stick definitely goes boom again. We are very happy to uh, now back to the form and back to the style what Crocus is all about. Indeed. And it's going to be said, Crocus is one of those bands that um, has an incredibly loyal fan base. That's what I hear the whole day long. I'm doing interviews now since 8 in the morning with the, with the uh, UK. And that's what I hear. And I'm very pleased to hear that because we almost forgot it here because we play a lot in Germany. We play all over Europe. But unfortunately, not Great Britain. And now I hear the whole day uh, about his loyal fans and this. And then I hear uh, just last week that uh, Rock Candy, uh, a well-known good label uh, in the UK, is, is re-releasing our four big albums, Metal Rendezvous, Hardware, One Wise, and uh, Headhunt. So it's time to come back and play your country. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. And it's got to be said that uh, Rock Candy do an absolutely fantastic job of uh, re-releasing albums. Um, I do uh, have a tendency to buy them when they come out, and certainly the, the Crocus ones will be on my list for certain. No, that's great, because they're going to be uh, remastered, some additional uh, cover artwork, and uh, no, uh, we are really looking forward to because it's all about the enthusiasm of this music style, you know, mm. and when you feel... And when you feel not only by the fans and the musicians themselves, but by the label, if you feel that, you know, that, that really pushes your adrenaline. That's great, you know. I always, I, got, I must admit, I've uh, got quite a fondness for, uh, for bands from Switzerland because Switzerland's generally by people who don't probably follow rock music is not seen as being, um, shall we say, a country renowned for rock music. However, when you look at the bands that have come out of Switzerland as yourself and obviously Gotthard and China and Chakra, I mean, you guys really do pump out some fantastic music. Yeah, it's maybe because it's a small, cold country and you have to find a way out of this cheese and clock and chocolate world here, you know. <laughs> so you have to find, a, you have to make a plan, you know, and you have to, uh, unfortunately, all those bands you mentioned never made it to America or never made it really big in, in Great Britain, you know. There is some talent here mm. and I hope and I hope the world is going to check it out, you know, but... Uh, uh, I'm really glad that we were able, you know, in the early 80s, which was definitely the high time of this kind of music, you know, yeah. that we could play a, a place like the Hammersmith Odin, uh, Odeon or Glasgow, Apollo or Manchester. You know, I mean, this is this is for me still like a dream. You know, that that is that was unbelievable. You know, because when we uh, grew up, we are older than the bands you just mentioned. You know, we grew up with British bands. You know, we mm. grew up with the Who with the Who, with the Stones, you know, we, we, we grew up with, with all the, we had the British influence, so for me, it was the biggest dream come true to play your island, you know, come over there and play the big venues, you know, and uh, I can't wait to, to really uh, come back, and that's as the, at the moment, what I can tell for sure is that we play on this uh, Hard Rock Hell Festival uh, uh, the 15th of November in Wales, you know, Indeed. and I hope that, yeah, and I hope there's some more, some more dates to follow, you know. Well, I was actually up at that venue in Wales, um, what are we now, about three weeks ago um, for the, the HRH AOR2 festival. And it's got to be said, it's a great venue. Um, I think you guys are really going to enjoy playing there. It's a great that's stage. Great. Super, super. That's good to hear. And finally, we are back for the British uh, fans because we always... That was for us always more 
impressing in America. America was good, of course, you know, big party and whatever, you know, but the, the, the English guys, they know what it's all about, and, and there, there, there's no bullshit going on. You can really... Uh, no, we are hot to come back, and especially now that the original is back, and a little mm. taste of that we a little taste of that we give now on that live album. So, so people who forgot about us just listening to that, and you know exactly what this croak is all about. If you listen to a song like Hoodoo Woman" or the, the big ones, the, the Easy Rockers or the Bedside Radios, that's what is this band is all about, you know. Well, it's got to be said, I mean, you guys on this live album um, still sound superb. But I am really pleased that as one particular track made it onto this album, and it is my all-time favourite Crocus track, and that is Screaming in the Night. Really? Really? That's, uh, that's interesting that you say that, because a lot of British uh, come to me and they tell me uh, the biggest hit in, in, in your country was Bedside Radio and uh, Rock City, some people know. Yeah, it, it's different, but... I take it as a compliment, you know, the, the Screaming in the Night is more a ballad, and as we know, Crocus is as, as well known as the second best thing to ACDC, because Mark <laughs> sounds like, like Mark Absolutely. Like some of the songs like Bon Scott, you know, and uh, Bon Scott was, as we all know too, uh, the, the the great singer of ACDC, and uh, we take it as a compliment when people compare us with ACDC because in a comparison to Airborne, which have a lot of energy, but they miss the songs, you know, and we, we crocus, we have the songs, and mm. I, I will never forget, a, a British journalist once wrote, Long Stick Goes Boom, that's the best song ACDC never wrote, you know, and that's the best compliment <laughs> <laughs> we got on, on this side. But then, on the other hand, there is this other side of focus with Screaming in the Night, with Tokyo Nights, with Easy Rocker, Celebration. All that is a totally other face. So this band has like two faces, a backhand and a forehand, you know? Absolutely. And both, yeah, and both are mean, mean rock and roll shit, you know? Well, the problem is, Chris, I don't know what it is about me. Maybe I'm just uh, an awkward old bastard. I don't know. But I always seem to pick tracks that nobody else picks. So so I don't know what it is. Obviously, the tradition is still going from my point of view. <laughs> no, no, but, don't, uh, yeah, but don't, uh, don't judge wrong. You know, you have to know that Screaming in the Night is the biggest hit the band ever had in the United States of America. So so you are well there. That's a good good choice, you know. It's it's a good choice for the ballot, but you probably have as well a favourite when it comes to the heart to stop, I guess. Ah, uh, this is very true indeed, absolutely. Uh, I mean, if I'm going to pick another... Or am, I talking, or am I talking to a very romantic guy, you know? <laughs> oh, I, uh, That's cool. That you'd have to ask my wife. I, I'm not going to stick my head on that. I'm only going to get into trouble if I say anything on that front. <laughs> I, to, uh, I mean, to, to pick another favourite track, I mean, it's, it's easy to probably to pick, um, you know, the, the ones you're well known for. I mean, Hoodoo Woman, obviously, is the last track on the live album. It's another favourite of mine. Um, Great. Okay. But it's okay. got to be said, I mean, Mark's voice is still absolutely on the money. He, he's lost yeah, that, nothing. That, that was the big surprise, because you lo listen to those other bands, you listen to David Coverdale, Ian oh, Gillen, well, yeah. or, or even Brian Johnson of ACDC, they are losing quite a bit. They sing... Unfortunately, all yes. Under, under, down under, they sing, you know. And Mark is still kicking that ass, and this is, uh, this is uh, really something uh, unusual in, the, uh, in that age. I mean, don't forget the age we are in now, you know. So, so for us... Uh, that's what we said. Listen, let's do it like this. Let's stop on top. Let's not go on till the music is just sounding like a joke. Because mm. at the moment, uh, and we didn't have to do nothing in the studio. That's what it is. You know what, what you hear on the live album. That's what you're gonna hear live. You know. Yes. So, so let's really let's end up. That's when I came back five years ago after a, a split of twenty years. I said. Let's bring back Crocus to the level we once had. And then we can stop with glory and pride, you know. And that's what we want to do. We want to go on for two or three more years and end it up before voices start to drop or somebody drops dead, you know, on stage or whatever, you know. So that is uh, what, what we, our aim, we, we shoot for, you know. 
I think you're absolutely spot on. I mean, I'm a massive, massive White Snake fan, as listeners know only too well, and it is incredibly disappointing for me to hear, you know, uh, David Coverdale now. I mean, really, he needs to call it quits, and I, I'm, I'm going to say that as a fan, not not yeah, just too. as a critic. Me too, of course. Me too. Uh, it, it is a joke, you know. I mean, it, it is. You know, I worked, I worked for ten years when I didn't do. I didn't do Crow because I worked for 10 years with a band called Gotthard, you know. Who we know and, very well indeed. And of course, they've got a new album out as well. Yeah. And they had a singer by the name of Steve Lee. He was tragically had an accident indeed. on his motorbike three years ago. This guy, this guy, Steve Lee, uh, we once played and there was John Lord of Deep Purple there as well. And he said, I never heard the guy singing like that. He was blowing away David Coverdale with one sentence. I mean, he had all the power David Coverdale was losing, you know. Mm. So it's a very, it's very sad, you know, double sad first that Steve died, but as well that David Coverdale is not seeing it. You see, Robert Plant, he, he checked that out, you know. He checked that his voice is not anymore like Led Zeppelin. That's why he didn't do a senseless reunion. He resisted to that, although yeah. he could make hundreds of millions with that. But he said, no, I want to make a different music which fits to my voice and, and in 2010 or whatever, you know. So I have the biggest respect for those who stop on top. Well, it's going to be said, obviously, you know, the, the classic bands that we're talking about, you know, when you realise what the average age of the band members are, I mean, do you think there are strong enough young bands coming through now to maybe carry the torch, as it were, for for the rock music? Well, this is this is a very hard question. I'm not a crystal ball reader, you know. It's very hard mm. uh, because I don't know if they can basically hold on through 40 years. You know, most of the bands... We are already lucky if they go on for 10 years, you know. Indeed. But to hold, hold it on for 40 or 50 years, like the Stones, or, I mean, I don't know if there are, that we have to look at. I hope, I hope that... This is, this is exactly the, the same for me, Chris. I, I hope, I don't know, I, I can't see it at the moment, but uh, one can hope. Yeah. I mean, the rock scene, uh, and I've said this on quite a few interviews, um, certainly with uh, European bands, the rock scene has got an awful lot better the last few years. It is pro it, there is a definite resurgence at the moment, it's certainly cool, you know, in, it, certainly it, in Europe. Like when, yeah, I, I kind of like it. It's like in the football, you know, when a, 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 when a, a team gets too well and too rich and too whatever, they get tired and they get self self uh, how would you say it, self content too much and. Mm. And it's good now that with the whole crisis we have on the CD market and everything, that now all the bullshit bands, they go away. And only those who really want to rock from the heart on, they will survive and come on. Because now, if I, I say to all the young musicians, don't do it for fame, don't do it for the money, do it for the music, do it like we did, we, we never... That's why we lost millions of uh, with the American manage millions of dollars because we never were interested in tomorrow. We were always interested in the next song and improving yeah. as a band. And, and this spirit has to come back, and I believe it will come back because uh, there's going to be a counter reaction to to all that popish uh, computer made bullshit uh, digital music. I think you're absolutely right. I think there is there is a hunger out there for people to see quality live music yeah. again. There's, there's yeah, definitely, there's that, that scene is definitely um, getting a massive resurgence because you cannot beat a live rock band. I mean, I've seen, I, I don't, I hate to think how many concerts I've seen over the years, and that there is yeah, nothing like okay. the buzz of a live rock band. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, young British band. I, I recently saw a band. It's called Heaven's Basement, or, or how yes. are they called? I am uh, familiar. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, I talked to the drummer, Chris Rivers, and it seems to me there is a certain hunger and a certain power there. I don't know how they are doing in, in, in England, but I was pretty impressed that, that young guys like that, you know, they they carry around their own equipment. They really kick gas and travel long ways to play in a, on a small festival somewhere, you know. That's the hunger I mean, you know, that's the respect mm. I have you know, for those people. 
No, fortunately, there are bands like that out there now who are, as you say, they do have that hunger. And it's, uh, as you rightly said, money doesn't come into it. If if you want to do it for money, you're not going to make it. No, if you want to make some money, go and work on a bank, you know, especially yeah. on a Swiss <laughs> <Yeah>. bank. <laughs> but, but if you want to make music, the first, uh, the first uh, thing you get, the game, is... The music itself, you know, it, because music is for me medicine. We, we when people yes. come to us and they, they say to me, "Hey, you look like mid forty, you know," I say, "You know why? It's because of the fucking music, <laughs> of course, of the girls, the girls too. But, <laughs> but it's the music. It's the music who keeps you young. You know, that's the best thing you can do. And when we are not touring, and so you you feel immediately bad, and and you you want to go out and play, and 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 the music is helping you to to stop that really crazy thing at the moment where everybody is just hanging on a computer or a laptop and they are just in their brain instead of their body. And you, you and if you yeah, neglect that, that's not good, you know? I could not agree more with you. I mean, if it wasn't for music, um, well, I don't... Life would be pretty unbearable, I think, would probably be the easiest way to yeah. put it. Uh, I, could not, I, mean, I could not spend a day without music. That's it, you know, for us it's the same, you know, music and from time to time some football and, and that's all we need. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, to have something to eat, you know, but the, and the warm place to go. But uh, I think, no, and rock and roll is going to survive. I, I think the worse the time gets and it, it's going to get worse, that's for sure. It's not only go up, up, up. That was never in history of, of the planet like this. So... Even in, in, in bad times, which will come, the music is going to be the healer, and I'm, I'm 100% sure. And some young people have to take the torch you're talking about. They have to take this yeah. and take over from the big bands back. You know, it's as well in classical music, there are the years and the century of the giants. And I definitely, honestly think we are not that fast going to get a new Hendrix, a new Stones, a new ACDC, or uh, even a new crocus, I think, for Switzerland speaking, you know, I, I think it's going to, yeah, it, this was the century or at least the last decades of the high blossoming of, of this hard rock, you know. It's going to be very, very difficult to have a new Led Zeppelin or something like that around, you know, let's be honest. But I think rock music will always survive simply on the basis of the fans of the music. This is probably yes. something that other people don't understand. As I said at the start, obviously the loyalty that uh, there are amongst Crocus fans and any rock fan want, yeah, is that they will follow a band through thick and thin. They buy all the albums. They go and see the band. They don't just buy one single and forget about them the next week. That's one of the big surprises when you are, uh, have a band like we are along for 40 years and you see in the audience, besides the normal fans about mid-ages somewhere, you know, you see at least here in Switzerland, Germany or France, you see one third is under 20 years old. So to me, it's like a, a opening a, a, a jewelry box, you know, and this young kids which hear all this pop bullshit the whole day on the radio, they suddenly discover Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, Stones, and then and, that, and, and Crocus too, you know, so they are discovering guitar music, not computer music, you know, handmade, soulful, yes. music, guitar music, and that's the great thing, that's, that's they, they can discover from a big, big box of great, great bands. And that's Huge box. Really cool. Because I remember the time when we grew up, I went to, into a music shop. There were just two spots, one with LP and one single. And every week was maybe two or three LPs coming out. Now you have thousands. This yeah. is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, I'm, I'm glad you yeah. brought up LPs, Chris, because um, I always get uh, lambasted for bringing up vinyl because I am still a massive vinyl fan. And it is most pleasing to see that the new Crocus album is out on vinyl as well. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, we here in, uh, uh, on the continent, we here have uh, yesterday it came out on vinyl here, you know, 
And if you don't get it in England, I'm going to bring you one. You know. And no, and we, it is available on Amazon. I I went and checked, and it is on my it is on my list. I I'm making a, an exerted effort to buy at least one or two vinyl albums every month. No, do do so, and because first of all, it sounds better. That's we have not absolutely. About it, that's true. And I was very surprised that in England there is a label called Back to Black or something like this. Back to Black. Okay. Black, yeah, and they brought out our four big albums: uh, Metal Rendezvous, uh, Hardware. One word, and that um, you have to check it out with the brilliant artwork. They look really cool. I mean, really, I mean, it looks hammer. I mean, absolutely great, you know. And uh, I, I just got them, you know, uh, last year, you know, that somebody told me that in England there is this little company who is specializing on hard rock on vinyl. Well, so, I um, have written that, Dan, and I shall be scaring the internet for that as soon as, as, soon as we finish really. talking. <laughs> absolutely. It's absolutely worth it, man. It's a, And it, it looks great. You know, they are really made because they, the covers as well look great, especially the metal rendezvous with the two cars crashing and, uh, and as well Headhunter, which was mm. the first artwork with a silver chrome deadhead before everybody, you know, before... Uh, uh, and, and with the song Eat the Rich on it before Motorhead, you know. So uh, let me tell you, uh, this is a big, big satisfaction to see that, you know. And uh, I'm just looking on the net at the moment, but it's I think it's called Back to Black. And this is a fantastic, uh, it's great, you know. It, they made it really with the heart, you know, with feeling, you know. Uh, and not just uh, bullshit stuff, you know. Well, I can play no. when when there is no money left in the bank account because I've spent it all there. I, I'll just uh, <laughs> I will just okay. uh, explain to my wife that it's all your fault. <laughs> okay, tell tell her, you know, I I bring her some Swiss chocolate, you know, when we meet uh, at the festival there in Wales, you know, uh, you can be sure I'm gonna bring you some uh, some uh, chocolate over, and I'm gonna bring you a special vinyl. For you, especially from the last album as well, from uh, Dirty Dynamite. I have here one, and uh, I promise to you a folded album with uh, Hallelujah, Rock and Roll, Go Baby Go, Rattlesnake, Rumble, Dirty Dynamite, Let the Good Times Roll, etc., etc. Chris, it's that would be fantastic. Researched. All you have to do, pass by, or when I'm the next time in London, you know, we could meet, you know, you come come for a, for a drink, you know. That's that's a, that. Uh, I don't think that would take a lot of persuasion, Chris. To be honest. <laughs> okay. So I give you. So I give you my email. You know. So you can uh, you can write me when, uh, as well, send me the link to to what you do now. You know, and uh, I keep in contact. So when Absolutely. I come to London, when I come to London, in my suitcase is going to be a couple of vinyl albums. You know. Well, Chris, it's been okay. an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I, yeah. I, I wholly intend to drag you back on the show again when no doubt you'll bring another album out within the next year or two, fingers crossed. Yeah, and even if you feel like, if you want, when uh, Rock Candy is uh, uh, doing uh, mid-year, uh, those are all classics, whatever you feel, you bring me on the show when you want, i would be here. You can write me any time, you know. That's much appreciated, Chris. I think it's been a massive pleasure having you on the show, and thank you for spending the time today. It's my pleasure, and uh, thanks for... Uh, uh, we all in the band uh, appreciate a lot after being so long away from Great Britain. We really, truly appreciate the uh, help of people like you, which keep uh, the flame of rock and roll alive, you know. Thanks thank a you. lot, my man. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Yeah.